If you have your own router at home and you're trying to make circuit boards, then this video is for you. I'm Josh Whitman, CEO of Whitman Technological. In today's video, I want to talk about how I took my homemade router and I turned it into the ultimate PCB factory. The biggest upgrade I made was to go from V engraving bits to a 0.2 millimeter end mill. But with that huge upgrade, there's a lot of very scary drawbacks. These end mills cost like $30 a piece and I broke $150 worth of them trying to figure out how to use them. Figuring out the right speeds and feeds was critical. At first, I was feeding it way too slow and it, uh, it bogged down and eventually broke the bit and I did that four different times before I realized I was going too slow. My first attempt was faster than the remaining three and that one was the most successful. It got worse and worse and that's when I realized like, oh, I'm going the wrong direction. For these copper cladding on these tiny bits, I used 1% of the diameter as the rule of thumb for figuring out what my feed rate should be. If it's a 0.2 millimeter end mill, then I need 0 0.0002 millimeters of material per tooth. At two flutes, that's 0 0.0004 millimeters of material per rotation. My router caps out at 11,500 RPM, which comes out to 46 millimeters per minute of forward movement to feed the teeth the right amount of material to get a good solid cut. You want your depth of cut to be around 0.05 millimeters. 0.05 millimeters is a very, very thin layer to be cutting. The copper blanks that you buy are not perfectly laser flat. First thing I do is check and see if there's any noticeable bend to it and try to reverse that bend so that the board's as flat as it can be. If we put the copper blank down and push on it, we can see if there's any parts where it's not lying completely flat against the router bed. Once I seat it in there, I only finger tighten my little clamps because it doesn't need a whole lot of force to keep it in place. I found that even when I did all of this, when I was doing my height probing, I'd end up with a height deviation of almost a half a millimeter across the surface of just the part of the board that I was about to engrave. If you're using these end mills, you're going to have to compensate for variations in height on your circuit board. The most reasonable way to do that is by probing the height using your router. I also broke an end mill because there were some uh, defects on the surface of the circuit board. So you need to make sure that you're working with an extremely clean, extremely smooth, defect-free copper blank when you do this. The isolation traces is absolutely the hardest part in this process. Once you've got the traces isolated, you just drill the holes and then the holes are drilled and you do the, the cutout and you've got yourself a perfectly functional circuit board. With the circuit board on the machine, I'll generally wash it with water and give it a little scrub with just a generic scouring pad sponge. Go 
going through this whole process, breaking bits, figuring out what I was doing wrong and making corrections. Now I have a super streamlined tool chain to go from KitKat to my Gerber and drill files. And then the Gerber file feeds into FlatCam, which already has my presets uh, configured for the isolation and the cutouts. And that generates the G code. And then I take my drill files and my G code and I pop it into the custom software I wrote to orient it on the board, do the height mapping, and then isolate the traces, drill the holes, and cut the board out. It's all like super straightforward, super easy flow now, which is awesome. In the end, I had a totally usable breakout board for an analog digital converter that is gonna be the basis for some of the sensors for the Android that I'm building. Uh, I'm gonna to need to make about 12 or 13 circuit boards for this version of the Android. It's Nephili 3, which is why this video says Nephili 3 episode one. Um, this version three of the Android, because I need so many circuit boards, I wanted to really streamline that process now so that I could do it without making a bunch of mistakes over and over again in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh Whitman with Whitman Technological. I love science and I hope you do too.